Greetings, I decided to dress up for the occasion because Olama just released vision capabilities for Llama 3.2. What do you see in this picture? It worked, and it was pretty fast. In case you were not aware, Meta just released Llama 3.2 a few weeks ago, and it has vision capabilities where it can recognize what's in images. Olama originally made their Llama 3.2 version right here that you see, and they just today came out with 3.2 vision. So I'm going to test it out. Start with downloading it. So we got Olama pull Llama 3.2 dash vision. Assuming you already have Olama installed, if you don't, there's a video in the description to show you. It says the model you're attempting to pull requires a newer version of Olama. Good to know. Let's download a new version. Now that Olama is installed, let's try again. Good, it's downloading. I like this open web UI. You can run this Llama vision model through Olama using the Python library, the JavaScript library, or curl. The web UI now has a plus symbol. You can cl click here to upload a file. So first, let me select the Llama 3.2 vision latest, click plus, upload file, pick something simple like a picture of my cat. And just to make sure it's working, ask it, what do you see in this picture? It worked and it was pretty fast. That's cool. I'll do a little bit more testing then. You're supposed to be able to run this from the command line by typing the path to the file followed by your prompt, but that doesn't seem to be working. I keep getting HTTP post errors. I'm not really sure about that. If you haven't seen already, I've tested the 90 billion parameter version of this and I ran it through a set of prompts with images and different scenarios just to see what would happen. And I'm gonna run this one through the exact same set of prompts to see how the 11B compares to the 90B. Looks like it worked and it's pretty accurate. It says Black Triumph Motorcycle, the motorcycle is facing towards the right side. It's parked on a paved road that runs through a wooded area. And in the background, you can see more trees and foliage. So not only does it see what's in the foreground, it also has depth perception. You can see what's in the background. Here's the picture of the people and the dog and their sandwiches. The model recognizes that it's an adult man and a woman sitting in the back of a vehicle. If you look over here, you can kind of see that there's like a rear view mirror in the backs of the seats. And they're sitting in a hatchback facing the opposite way from the front of the car. The 90B version actually recognized that they were sitting in a hatchback facing the opposite way. This one did not. Anyway, it knows that there's a white dog and that the people are wearing jackets and sweaters. It says some windows can be seen behind the people and dog because it knows the windshield and car door windows are on there. Now, one interesting thing is this says that the dog is gazing directly at the camera with its mouth slightly open, but it isn't. It's watching the sandwiches, and the 90B version actually recognized that the dog had its eye on the sandwiches. <sighs> also interesting to me is the 11B and the 90B version both recognize that the dog is a Labrador Retriever. Now it's recognizing this picture of the city. Uh, it says that it's a bustling city in Bangkok, Thailand. I don't think the 90B version knew exactly what city it was, although the 90B version came up with a much more detailed description of the cityscape. Although I'll give this one credit because it says it can see several vehicles driving down the street, people walking on the sidewalk, and several tall buildings. So it knows what's there. Only thing is, it says the sky above is overcast. I don't think so. I mean, it's mostly clear with a little bit of clouds. It's so a suggestion that it may rain or about to rain, but I think that part is not accurate. Now it's analyzed a picture of this landscape. It says it's a serene and picturesque landscape. There's a tranquil body of water, a small bridge, and lush greenery with trees and bushes. It also says a brilliant blue sky stretches out. So that's all very accurate. Of course, this is not going to be as detailed or in depth as the 90 billion parameter version. But for an 11B version that's just running on my little Linux computer, that's not bad. This one was a straight into the point analysis. It says a young woman with long, dark hair and glasses, gray shirt, gold earrings, and a necklace. I didn't even notice she was wearing earrings. I can't really tell if they're gold, but still, that was a good catch. The background of the image is out of focus, which it is, and it appears to be a busy city street. So, succinct and accurate. Again, shortened to the point. Young woman sitting at a table, eating a croissant, wearing a red dress with long brown hair. She's in a cafe or a restaurant and even recognizes there's people in the background. Good. One of the images I'm going to be including in my vision model test kit is this image of this girl behind the tree bark. So when you've got one object slightly obscured behind another, it's interesting to see if the vision model is able to pick up on that. So let's analyze this one. It says young girl peering through the bark of a tree. Interesting. In the last two pictures that had women in them, the model recognized they were women. This one says young girl and somehow managed to recognize that the age of this one is younger. It also says peering through the bark of a tree because it knows it's behind like a broken tree bark or something. And it says the girl's eye is visible because you can see one eye visible. It also says it's a natural setting, possibly or a forest or a woodland, which would make sense. And it says the tree trunk is rough and textured. 
So this vision model does pretty good even when one object is slightly obscured by another. The final test is text recognition. It can see that the sign says make this day great because it has good OCR and OCR has been around for a long time. So I'm sure it would be you know good with that. One problem is it says it has three horizontal rows of six squares each. Now I counted six squares in the middle and bottom row, but only four squares in the top row. So that was not accurate, but it tried and at least noticed that there were squares. It says each square contains one letter or symbol, which is correct. It even recognized that the letters are multicolored and it listed all the colors that it used for the letters and symbols. It also recognized that the sign is illuminated. Two quick technical notes if you're going to try this at home. When I tried to upload a file and put an image in here, and I told it to describe what you see in this image. Every single time it gave this error, oops, no text generated from Olama. I looked it up online and I didn't really find anything substantial, but I figured out a workaround. Type anything, type the word test, let it come back to you with a text response, then hit the plus button, upload file, put the file in, give it a prompt, describe what you see in this image, and it will then generate text. For whatever reason, there's some weird bug and I had to do that workaround. The other thing to be aware of is sometimes this doesn't like it when the image is physically too large. So if it doesn't work, you might have to resize the image and scale it down. That about wraps it up. Thanks for watching and hanging out with me. I really think this is going to have big implications later. I mean, think about it. This could be applied to so many things. Healthcare, education, construction, land survey, you know, architecture, and the list goes on and on and on of what you can use a vision model for. Uh, factories, the vision model is going to be combined with robot arms. They're going to be able to recognize what it's touching. If you watched my last video about tactile sense and robot hands, that's going to be mixed with vision. So a robot will be able to understand what it sees and get sensory feedback from what it's touching. But I know from putting the word out there that a lot of people who watch me hate X. I don't blame you. Bad reputations going around there. But if you do decide to sign up for X or if you're on there, look for me at Vectro. Once you ignore all the other noise that's on there, I'll be able to give you early access to some of the language model testing that I do before I make a full video about it. And I also expand the conversation out and it gives me a chance to post things that I don't necessarily have time to on here. And it allows me to go into different topics other than what this channel is about. Appreciate if you give me a follow on there and I might see you around there. If you're new to my channel, I like to curate open source large language models and run a specific set of testing through all of them. I also like to give step-by-step -step instruction tutorials on different open source AI systems you can run on your own computer, particularly in Linux. So if that's something that interests you, please subscribe. If you want to be notified when I make a new video, please hit the notification bell and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.